Welcome everyone. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Welcome everyone. We're just letting people in. Just be a moment. We always get questions on that slide. I see Hada says that looks like Salem. <laughs> we always get questions it's, and I'm not, oh, go ahead. It's, it's Gloucester. It's a passive mm. house project, affordable housing, 30 units. Mass EC provided a grant to it and it's um, financed by Mass Housing, which means that they have a pretty high requirement for minority and women owned business subs. So I think maybe we should get started. Tamika, you wanna start, I guess? Sure, yeah. So welcome everyone to um, our series of webinars. Um, I wanna say that um, for those of you that joined us last week on um, when we released the solicitation on um, MWBEs, this is, we're gonna continue this process. So thank you all for joining. Keep coming back to the Mass CEC webpage um, and if, I'm sure you all have signed up for updates that are on this call, but I'm just gonna give a little plug. If you have not signed up for updates from Mass CEC, I would encourage you to um, do that. And I'm sure that um, someone on our team can drop that page um, in, into the chat, you will see that. So just wanna give a shout out reminder on that piece. So my name is Tamika Jacques. I am the Senior Program Director at Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, leading um, the workforce team. And because you know, we are um, hosting a set of webinars over the next few months, I just think it's important that um, you know who kind of supports the workforce team. So um, really, really quickly, I just want to do an introduction um, to the workforce team. And I'm going to start with Bev, who is unofficially on the workforce team, but officially on the workforce team. So Bev, I'll just let you take it over. And then followed by um, Janelle is on this call. Elizabeth is on this call. Uh, Camilla is on this call. I just want them to say hi. And Hannah and Nicole. And if Jesse is on this call, if they all can just turn on their cameras for a second and just say hello so that when you do email Mass CEC under the workforce team, um, you know who's answering your email because we do have this workforce email on this slide. So just know who is answering your, uh, your, your questions to your email. So I'm going to let Bev um, kick it off. Hi, I'm Bev Craig, and you'll hear from me a little later. Hi, Janelle Granham, uh, Senior Program Manager on the Camilla. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Camilla Bacolod, and I'm the Program Administrator for the Workforce Team. And it's H Hannah, why don't you? Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm the Workforce Development Fellow on the team. Is Nicole, I see you, Nicole. Yep. And just to round it out, I am Nicole Zoff. I'm a Workforce Development and Environmental Justice Fellow from SEC. Okay, is Jessie on? I don't see her, but if she's here. Okay, so she's not. Okay, so um, I just want to, um, let's go over a little bit of the agenda because we do not go over time on our um, webinars. This webinar is recorded just in case anyone did not know, but you should have received a message. So. What happens with our webinars is that um, thank you for joining, but we also, if there's any questions that you'll have, we are going to post these. It gives us a couple of days. Um, we'll post these on our website. So just want to be very clear on that. If you want to like spread that information or something you missed, um, you can always ask us questions, but then this is recorded. So what we're going to talk a little bit today is um, talk about the solicitation again. 
Um, Bev is going to cover uh, some research that we know, like some best practices, how to support MWBEs. Um, and so Bev will talk a little bit about that, approaches, supporting the efforts. And then because we know that um, this is really new for Mass CEC and, um, you know, we want to be able to make sure that if you have some ideas and you want to bounce them off other people, that you are able to network with others. So we will have some breakout, we will have a breakout room for those that um, will stay on and do it again, all within the hour, and then we can um, answer some questions as well. So, um, you know, for those interested, again, with connecting with other potential partners, um, we, we uh, have a list that's going that shows your organization name, your focus, um, you know, the contact email. So we do have a running list going that, um, that we share with everybody. So let's say if, you know, you're like, oh, I want to meet, um, you know, Haras, I saw you ask a question. I'm really interested in what her organization does. Is there something that we can partner with her for? Then um, we're trying to build up our networking too. We don't just want this to be, you know, different grantees all over the place. We really want to make sure that we are networking um, with each other. And you all know how much I love networking because I have a book on networking. So next slide. <laughs> all right. So if you are new to Mass CEC, um, these are our four focus areas. Um, the first is high performance buildings, clean transportation, net zero grid, and offshore wind. So again, you know, we are looking at industries that, um, you know, are, are, are meeting the 2030, 2050 um, climate goals that Massachusetts has signed on for, and we are all essentially signed on for. So um, I just wanna be very clear on that. When we're talking about our four focus areas and we're talking about supporting the NWBEs, we really wanna support those um, companies that uh, you know are in our four focus areas and really are adding to the 2030, 2050 um, climate work, right? So let me just go over what we, uh, when we have a breakout room choices later on for networking, we are going to look at high performance, new construction, building retrofits and electrification, solar, battery storage, clean transportation, uh, Creation, again, if, if you're thinking of this as a way that you want to support um, NWEs, creation of new minority and women business enterprises, and of course, offshore wind and offshore wind supply chain. And we do have a link um, here. So just as you know what we're talking about and what we're going to give best practices, what Bev is going to share in a few minutes is, um, you know, we have a solicitation open. It's for $4.5 million dollars. Proposals are due April 29th. Um, and then from that point, it will be every six months. So some might say, you know what, I just want to attend the webinars. I want to learn what's critical to the 2030, 2050 climate goals. I want to get ready. I want to network with people. I want to see what they're thinking. And then six months from now, I want to come in and apply for a grant. But for those of you that are ready to go, um, we do have grants between 250,000 and a million available for three years of support. Um, I do wanna say that part of this is is a tracking component. So you will be asked, you know, if say if you want to support new creation of businesses, how many you know businesses were created, staff, things like that will um, have to be tracked. And again, just looking at the goal, right? We want to support um, MWE companies in their entry, their creation, their expansion into the fields. Um, we want to make sure that they get certified. A lot of you know that um, that to get certified in the state of Massachusetts, it is not an easy process. You go to a workshop and then you're off on your own, right? And we want to be able to really support that. If anyone has gone through the DCAM certification, you know again how hard it is. And so we do have a caveat to this is that the applications, when they come in, they're not scoring well. Um, you know, Mass CEC might say to you, listen, we really love your idea, but we just don't feel it's complete enough to be able to run a three-year program, a two to three-year program. So here's a planning grant. Go off for a few months, plan it, you know, and, and let's really think about it and uh, we'll support you on that, right? So just that's just a little recap of what we are offering and then I will turn it over to Bev. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, so I'm just gonna touch on some 
research. And I've got to say, like, this is just scratching the surface. We are not comprehensive at all in what we've done, but we still feel like anything that we've learned so far, we want to hand off to you to give you sort of a head start on uh, figuring out things yourself. So uh, we have done quite a bit of internet research and some interviews um, to try and see, like, across the U.S., in different states, other places, like, what what kinds of support for minority and women-owned businesses working? Like, what would we love to see here? And uh, then we looked a little bit about what's here in Massachusetts, and there definitely are some programs that do exist and financing and groups that are working in this space, but um, a lot of times what we found in Massachusetts is really uh, that those that assistance and support is only for like a subset of minority and women owned businesses. And I would say the biggest gap that we see at this point is that there's not really a lot of customization for the climate critical businesses that we are gonna need to meet our 2030 and 2050 climate goals. Um, and as Tamika mentioned, there's probably under resourced help for obtaining certifications. And there's not a lot of integration with workforce efforts and in particular with actual work that would come out on the other end of whatever the kind of training program and supports would be there. So um, I'm just gonna quickly mention, I'm not gonna go through the details of these slides. They, these will be sent to everybody who shows up and there'll be a recording of this as well if you wanna look at it in more detail. But we're just gonna touch on a few things we see other places. And so um, this is an organization in New York, the Minority and Women-Owned Contractors and Developers Association. Uh, they're a nonprofit. They focus mostly in the New York City metro area. And they start basically with some big employers that are their strategic partners. So Turner Construction, which is also a very active general contractor here in Massachusetts, is one of their strategic partners. Um, you've got the SUNY New York school system, uh, Empire Corp New Empire Corporation, some of these big, uh, especially construction related uh, employers. And all of them are committed to using a certain percent of sub work and construction work with minority and women owned businesses. And so MWCDA, they're basically in the business of trying to build capacity and connect uh, smaller minority and women owned businesses with a lot of the projects that are out there. So uh, in particular, the New Rochelle area um, of New York is going through a huge construction boom right now. There's over $800 million worth of construction that, that New Rochelle has approved. And a lot of these partners here are actually involved with that construction. And so MWCDA is really helping to identify minority and women-owned businesses that can fit into those construction projects to help build capacity. And they're actually starting to even get into the workforce training for employees so that they can grow those businesses now. Um, so like a comparable effort in Massachusetts, like there's a lot of new construction that's gonna go on in the next decade. Think of Suffolk Down or like the Brighton area when the pike is straightened out or Bunker Hill or the Northland or Riverside developments. These are developments that are going to go over 10 years and a similar uh, kind of model could be used here in Massachusetts to this model. Cincinnati also is very well known for this minority, this minority business accelerator that they have. Uh, Procter & Gamble is headquartered there and um, they've been able to create over 3,500 jobs through this accelerator of taking minority and women-owned businesses, connecting them with some of the largest employers and their procurement needs, and building them up over time. And so portfolio firms there are minority and women-owned businesses. And so the, the Chamber of Commerce actually runs this program, and they provide very detailed like capacity building, one-on-ones, um, educational and networking um, opportunities, client readiness. And then uh, those companies, you sort of graduate into an accelerator program where they're, they're looking at sort of where they're going to fit into the workflow with the larger businesses in Cincinnati. And interestingly enough, they say that one of the biggest things is a lot of minority and women-owned businesses try and take on too much. And so a lot of the work at the accelerator level is actually to sort of slim them down to where their competitive advantage is and then build them up from there. And the goal setters are these bigger companies. So the Procter & Gamble's, there's over like 30 major employers in Cincinnati that 
uh, have made commitments to using minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, again, chambers of commerce across the country tend to be a, a really strong place for these kinds of activities. Um, Miami-Dade, Florida has um, very uh, sort of customized one-on-one -on -one consultations with minority and women-owned businesses to help them build up capacity and understand what needs there are, helping with certifications, a lot of peer networking. Uh, Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, again a chamber, this one more focused on constructions and definitely bilingual uh, instructors and capacity building. Uh, this Accelerate Latinx program is a national program, but I think actually we have a couple of players in Massachusetts that uh, work through this program. Uh, the U.S. Coalition of Black Women Businesses, uh, the Business of Network for Offshore Wind has a connection with this organization. So there's a big emphasis in a lot of their um, educational content around offshore wind. In uh, Northern California, you see an approach, especially in the tech industry, with like hackathons and conferences that um, has been very successful in generating new and growing minority women-owned businesses. And then the Enterprise Center uh, out of Philadelphia has actually been a big contractor with uh, small business association or, or small business loans across the nation. Um, they're a great place to look at uh, place, things that have worked. And American Associations of Black in, in Energy, this is more of a membership model, but really good webinars and very policy focused. So again, like I said, this is just scratching the surface. Like we are not hitting everyone here, but we wanted to point out the folks that we know so that um, if there's anything you learn from what seems to be working elsewhere, that maybe those are things to model your applications on. Um, and so also this is completely scratching the surface. And I apologize to those of you who are in the audience who don't get mentioned here, but I still wanna mention the people that we know. Um, so the Immigrant Learning Center out of Malden has, I, I mentioned the Interrise program that um, had the focus on um, construction, construction Latino in Philadelphia. That is a similar program to this. Um, it is, they have two versions sort of of support networks. The Interrise Strong program, which is a three week program, very like focused on what you need now. And then the Streetwise Strong program, uh, which is more like an MBA sort of curriculum to help. Uh, and it's more three month of a program. The Center for Women and Enterprise has actually a bunch of different centers across Massachusetts in different parts of the state. Um, they have some really strong courses, things like how to land your first client, legal considerations for business owners. Um, the Initiative for Competitive Inner City has this sort of a, a tuition free executive education program for BIPOC and women owned construction businesses. And that's going to be launching the first round in May. Emerald Cities Collaborative has. Uh, run several uh, rounds of a contractor academy for BIPOC and women-owned contractors. Uh, it's a, an eight-week, uh, two-hour session that's virtual at this point, and they are increasingly focusing on how to get into the workflows of the Mass Save Low Income Program so that contractors can uh, actually go directly to that work after going through these programs. Browning the Green Space has this accelerator for contractors of color in energy sustainable success, so access. Uh, I think their first cohorts are focusing on trades, uh, finding trades, people who are fairly far along in their career who might want to branch off and create their own companies. MIRA, the Massachusetts Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy Coalition, um, they have a really nice uh, website, I would call it like a clearinghouse uh, for folks who are creating new businesses and or uh, building up their businesses. A lot of focus on what resources there are for small businesses and access to capital. And this uh, starting a business in Massachusetts, a guide for new American entrepreneurs is a really, really strong resource. Babson College Center for Women's Entrepreneurial Neural leadership um, has this Black Day Symposium and business curriculum. 
one-on-one -on -one mentoring and peer coaching. A minority owned contractor that's been around in Massachusetts doing great work for a long time is launching a um, some wraparound support for other BIPOC led construction companies and they're calling that Surge. So that's definitely a place to look if you're interested in that. This is some of their staff, whoops, sorry. <laughs> the Black Economic Council of Beck, Beck, of Massachusetts, BECMA. I think a lot of people are very familiar with this organization. A lot of great resources and a lot of people to connect with. The Minority Massachusetts Minority Contractors Association. And so, like I said, this is just a, a smattering of some of the folks we happen to know about. We really want to connect you if you are a, an organization that's working in this space with others like this. And just sort of that's a summary of sort of like what I'm looking at, what I see nationally and what we see in Massachusetts. There's definitely some services and some things that are here in Massachusetts for like business plan support and like one-stop shop websites for resources, things like that, but we don't see as much, um, we certainly don't see much customized for climate critical business sectors uh, that, you know, Tamika pointed out those four sectors at the beginning. It's, we really need to see some of this customized for, for businesses that are entering and growing in those spaces. There's not a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one sort of counseling and mentoring that's available at Massachusetts at this point. And then I'd say the biggest weakness that you tend to see compared to some of these other programs is there's not a lot of the sort of strategic business introductions, um, helping to get people in the workflow of existing programs that are out there. Um, and like, basically, if, if folks go through your program, that they're going to actually get more business. So connecting them, networking them with uh, larger companies that might hire them uh, is a really important thing that we see as sort of a gap right now. So now I think the reason everybody came, not to listen to me, but to go network. <laughs> so uh, we right now have five uh, breakout rooms that you can select to go to. Uh, we have a facilitator in each room that can help with introductions and sort of kicking off the discussion. Our plan is to do about 20 minutes in these breakout rooms. And obviously there's overlap here, right? Like creation of minority and women-owned businesses, that's gonna overlap all these areas. Um, and we can't all be in two places at once, but that's why we have uh, sort of the spreadsheet so that if you want to follow up afterwards and network with other people, that if you add yourself to that list and take a look at that list, um, you can do that. So I'm going to hand it over to Camilla to show us how to get to our different, how to choose which work uh, group to go to. Okay. So. So I just opened all the breakout rooms and when you click on breakout rooms on the bottom of this Zoom page, you can select which room that you wanna join. But if you're having any issue joining um, any breakout room, just let us know and we can assign you manually to a room. Hi everyone, um, I hope you had a good time meeting some people in the breakout rooms and hopefully that was just a taste of what you can do to network within this community. I think this grant opportunity is just like a launching point for a lot of discussions that should happen within this community, regardless of whether we're talking about grant funding or not. Um, so I had a couple, there were a couple questions in the chat and then we're gonna open it up for questions too. Um, there was, I'm gonna share some slides of a couple programs that are open right now that small businesses should know about. Um, there was a question in the chat in particular about um, the COVID Recovery Act. It looks like, uh, Camilla, I need to be authorized to be able to share. Or maybe not. Let me try again. Can you share right now? Yep, now I got it. 
Thank you. Okay, let me zoom to the end of this presentation because we went through most of this. Um, but there's several like COVID or recent programs that have been launched. Uh, and we will put some, when we send out the slides at the end, we will definitely uh, give you links as well to these programs. Is it showing? Oh, here we go. Um, so this is just came out in the last week, which is $4,000 for Massachusetts employers. When you hire someone new, you can get $4,000. I think the most obvious place to use that is as a signing bonus, maybe with some of it up front and some in six months. Uh, it can also be used for training uh, to get someone, you know, basically to train someone on the job. But I would, I think a lot of small businesses in Massachusetts do not know about this program. And it's technically open now till the end of the year, but it is funding constrained. So it's sort of first come first serve. So I do hope this community spreads the word about this opportunity and tries to take advantage of this. Uh, we just talked to somebody about like an, making an intern into a full employee and that's like the perfect thing. They can get them a $4,000 signing bonus. Um, so this was the, the, the programs that uh, we mentioned last time that somebody was asking in the chat about. Um, there are two programs that the new applicant grant program and the inclusive grant program both have applications due April 4th. And this is, these are really for, I think they're meant for small businesses for COVID relief. I don't know the details, but I do know it's not a first come first serve program. So the fact that it's so close to the fourth doesn't mean that you won't get any money if you apply. I think it's, it's worth looking into uh, for anyone who's a small business. And then uh, this is a mass, mass CEC program. Um, businesses across the state that have fleets are eligible for fleet advisory services to basically help plan, you know, if you're gonna be um, purchasing fleet vehicles uh, it, in the next five years, uh, and this is specifically for medium and heavy duty private commercial fleets, uh, this is a service that you can apply for to help sort of plan out, like where would you do the charging? What kind of rebates are available? Where, what kind of vehicles are available that are electric? Um, and we are reserving a certain portion of these advisory services for minority and women owned businesses. So um, I do encourage anyone to spread the word about this to people who might be able to use it. So I wanted to open it up now. I haven't looked in the chat, but I think Nikki, were you going to sort of read out any questions that people had? Yeah, I definitely could. Um, earlier in the chat, we had, I don't wanna mispronounce names, but Bernetta um, mentioned COVID release funds, COVID relief funds, um, and just wanted some clarification upon that. Yeah, and so that's this program I was showing here uh, through Massachusetts Growth Capital. And uh, we can, I think we should put in the chat, um, maybe Nikki, can you like pull up, just Google that and put it in the, the um, chat for people? Yep, definitely. That's fine, I, I, I got a screen print, so. Okay. So. Awesome. And we will we'll send these slides around to everybody who attended as well. And we can put in that email some of the links as well, if they're not active links, because it will be a PDF. Um, yeah, I was just looking for the link and I couldn't find any link. And so that's why I wanted yeah, yeah. to. Um, do other people have questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand. I see Glenn has a question. Hey, thanks so much for hosting today. This is uh, always great to, to uh, meet with like-minded folks. Um, my question is with the MWBE utilization and, and policies are not just on the state level, but are separate counties also rolling out their own MWBE programs? I know in Jersey and New York and some other states, you know, they're, they're being pushed down for more localized uh, programs too? I'm not actually sure. Maybe Tamika knows, but I mean, definitely. Yeah. Um, so 
It's not so much with the MBEs. What they're doing statewide, though, is they have this problem program called a market maker program um, through the state workforce agency. And so the market maker is the one that is at, well, in Massachusetts, we have like mass hire um, locations, which is like your career center, one-stop shopping. And so these people are regional and they're really bringing businesses together with, um, you know, residents and they're aware of also these type of grant programs. And so right now, you know, we meet with labor and workforce, the state workforce, and we're all trying to um, make sure that each region does know about the programming that's happening. So we're not necessarily reaching out to each region, but we you know, we just met with the market makers a few weeks ago. And so now they know about Mass CEC and they know about our programs. So we're trying to meet regularly with the regional teams um, to let them know of the different funding that is happening. Because, you know, as you know, um, there's a lot of opera dollars out there and um, it's not just Mass CEC, it's Mass Life Sciences in, in Massachusetts as well. So we're all trying to be on the same page. So that's how right now we're doing that regionally. In the future, Mass CEC might ro roll out our own regional um, you know, networks might have our own version of market makers, but in the meantime, we're really just working with our regional market makers and sharing the information with them so that they can go to the, you know, employers and say, this is what's open and then match up, you know, residents or whoever wants to participate in different training programs. So Glenn, did that answer your question or were you asking more about procurement for like municipalities or regions? Yeah, so, so obviously you have the state budget right, where that has a designation for a certain percentage for MWBEs. And then the county budgets uh, or town budgets don't have the same requirement. So they can spend down as they see fit. So I was trying to just kind of gauge if you saw some movement on the county level, town level, if, the, you know, because once those budgets are approved for MWBE, then that opens up even more opportunity for folks no. too. Yeah, we don't really, and I mean, I think you're more thinking of the way that New York operates, maybe when you talk about county and town, but in Massachusetts, as far as um, like spending, a lot of it is around our workforce regions, which like there's 16, you know, workforce investment boards and those have mass hires around them. So we don't really operate that, that county region, what, you know, like that. Um, in Massachusetts. So maybe that's what you're comparing it to, but we necessarily are not as county focused as New York is. I only know that because I lived there before, but <laughs> I think that um, New York is more county focused um, and some of the other states are versus Massachusetts. <clears throat> it's really workforce regions when we talk about like, you know, women and minority businesses and things like that. Got it. No, I, I know the port of Baltimore they basically had to create their own, or they did, their own MWB program. So they're hyper-focusing on that area because of all the port development for energy. But uh, thank you very much. I it. Yeah. I see Alexis has her hand up. Yes, I was wondering, this is specific to the Mass EC workforce RFP, so those, um, the various uh, grant opportunities there. I was wondering, is it possible to uh, be a part of multiple applications, so potentially like a, a prime recipient for one and then a sub on another? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is possible depending on the service, right? So, you know, we will be looking at each application, like say if you're a primary, but you want to support another application. Our thing is we don't want to get two applications that are servicing the same participants. So we don't want to double count, right? So, you know, if, if you say to Mass CC, you know, I'm going to support, you know, biz if you're talking about this one, you know, however many businesses, you know, you can't necessarily get double counted. Now you're going to support them, you know, on, on the same businesses. So, it, you know, it, we just want to be very clear that it's separated on your application, right? So you're at different focuses because I think as we are rolling out the different funding streams that, um, we don't want things double counted. We want to make sure that we're reaching as many people as possible. And we do realize that many of you will be on different applications and different support, um, you know, supportive ways, but we want to make sure that we're not double counting the participants.
Uh, and we are going to have office hours. I'm sorry, I can't turn on my camera. Technology never works when you really need it. So, um, but we will have office hours that will be posted on Mass CAC's webpage and questions like that can definitely be talked about in office hours, like, you know, what you're thinking of this application serving as lead, but we want to support, you know, is this allowed? So we will get into that um, with the office hours that will be posted on um, Mass CC's webpage, and then we can kind of get in the weeds a little bit on what you're thinking. Yeah, we have uh, office hours tomorrow and on Monday posted so far, and we can add more if it seems like there's more demand, maybe as the, app, the deadline gets closer and people have very specific things they want to ask about. Glenn, do you have another question or is that from your before? That was before, but I'm so excited. I'll keep my hands up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> do other people have questions that we can try and answer right now? You know what? I do have one more. My apologies. The, so with, with clean energy, obviously uh, folks look at the coast as being the main sector and, and area. Is your, as an organization, there are so many other opportunities further inland, whether it's, it's supply chain or, or workforce recruitment. So are you for a more holistic approach statewide or are you leaning towards you know, what, a regional approach? We, I think, we, go ahead. Um, no, I think it's both, right? So if if it's a region that has, you know, if it's say let's on the south coast and they're looking at offshore wind, you know, businesses, supply chain, great. But we don't want to just limit it to the south coast. So there could be, you know, businesses on the west coast of on the western side of Massachusetts that could feed into that supply chain. Um, so I think that we'll, you know, we'll look at, you know, regions that looking at the businesses in the region, but also is there a way that we can cross pollinate um, all the way through Massachusetts because this is, you know, statewide. So I think we're open to ideas. Um, like I said, the market makers are going to be on a regional level, but we, you know, we want to do cross pollinization where it's open, where the opportunity, um, you know, is there. So I don't want to say just like offshore wind is on the south coast because there could be a great business that wants to get it on the supply chain side that's located on the western side. So how do we solve, you know, how do we get that business established and get them connected to the south coast? So I think it's a it's different tier approach. I don't think there's one approach. I think however we're approached about it, we want to make it happen, right? And Glenn, if you take a look at the scoring criteria, we're pretty explicit about wanting geographic diversity and approach diversity and sort of what categories people are looking at and, and our applicants. So we are very interested in seeing a variety of approaches. And I would say, like when you talk about the number of businesses and the sectors that we expect to need uh, before 2030 goals and 2050 goals are met on climate, an awful lot are building retrofit, right? We need, we need to retrofit 2 million buildings in the state. That's everywhere in the state, right? There are more buildings on the East Coast, but there are definitely a lot of buildings elsewhere as well. Great, thank you. Are there more questions? It is the top of the hour, just. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone for joining us. We will send the recording around and the slides around and uh, feel free to spread the word and connect through that spreadsheet. I think it's a great place to talk to people, even if this grant opportunity isn't for you. Uh, it's a great place to meet people who have uh, similar interests. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.